Hey, Richard Bryce here, tennis hacker. In this video, I'm gonna help you to improve your ball tracking so you can watch the ball more efficiently onto your strings, and that's gonna help you massively reduce the number of unforced errors you make. I hope you find the video helpful. If you do, it'd be great if you give me that thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, really appreciate it if you could do that as well. If you wanna improve your ball tracking, there's three things that you're gonna to need to do. The first one, is you need to make it a focus within your practice and training. Now this might sound obvious, but it's something that a lot of players get wrong because most people try and work on too many things at one go. So they're thinking about the way that they do the unit turn and the position of their elbow. They're thinking about the way that they do their racket drop. They're trying to meet the ball out in front. They're trying to watch the ball on the strings and they're trying to work on their follow through all in one go. And that's simply not possible. It's just too many things for your brain to think about all in one go. So the end result is that you don't end up doing any of them as well as you need to. If you need to improve your ball tracking, because that's the key to cutting down on unforced errors, you need to focus on that. So you're watching your opponent, waiting for them to make contact with the ball, kind of programming your brain and your visual system to watch the ball, and then you're focusing on watching it all the way through to that moment of contact, but it's your number one priority. And that brings us on to the second thing, which is understanding exactly how you're supposed to watch the ball. Now, as I've just said, your job is to focus on what your opponent's doing to pick up on the moment the ball leaves their strings. From there, your job is to try and keep your eyes and your head locked on it until the moment that it makes contact with your strings. And the reason that you want to do that is the way that our bodies are wired we make more accurate movements when we're looking at what we're doing. And everything in tennis comes down to the angle of the racket face at the moment of contact. You've gotta be able to control the angle of the racket head while you're making contact with the ball. And to make that more likely to happen, your eyes need to be looking at it. Now, there's a little bit of debate here because some people say that you can't watch the ball on and off the strings, it's moving too fast. But what you need to understand is we've got two types of vision. We've got focused vision or foveal vision. So if I'm looking directly at the camera lens, I'm looking at that with my focused vision. But I can see the ball out here. I can see the ball moving across, it's coming in, and now it's going away. That's my peripheral vision that's looking at the ball in that position. So when you're making contact, you know, ideally your focused vision might be able to pick up on that. But even if it can't, your peripheral vision is gonna be tracking the ball on and off the strings, and that's gonna give you the best chance of making those adjustments. If my head is looking down the other end and the ball's here, that is out of my peripheral vision, I'm no longer able to make any adjustments based on that visual information. That's why your job is to try and get your head lined up with the contact. Now there's another slight gray area and that's gonna be when the ball bounces because what you won't be doing is following the ball like that onto your strings. You're gonna be tracking it roughly in a straight line and the ball is gonna drop out of your focus vision as it makes contact with the ground. Your head and your eyes are gonna skip forwards a little bit and then the ball is gonna come back into your focus vision as it moves towards the contact point. But that's your job, is to focus on doing that, watching the ball onto the strings and really try and make your eyes and your head line up at that moment of contact. And ideally, just try and train yourself to keep your eyes and your head there for a second or at least a fraction of a second after the ball has left your strings. Now that you understand what you're supposed to do, we need to talk about something really important, and that is there is a high likelihood that your visual system isn't actually capable of doing the things that I've just described. This is why players take lessons for years, the coach screams at them to watch the ball over and over again, they give them a perfect explanation like I've just given them, and they still can't do it because there are multiple different visual skills that go into ball tracking. The way that we move our eyes is controlled by muscles. Those muscles are controlled by parts of the brain. There's different parts of the brain that control eye movements in different directions. And if those eye movements aren't working properly, it's really hard to track the ball. We've got different types of eye movements. We've got slow eye movements and we've got fast eye movements. When the ball's traveling slowly, we're gonna track it in one way. When the ball's traveling really quickly, we're actually gonna make lots of little jumps skipping ahead of the ball, so we're gonna be tracking it a different way. And then we've got different skills that are related to our head movements, because when we start to move our head, it changes the way that our eye movements are created. So if I look at the camera lens right now and turn my head, there is a specific visual skill or reflex that keeps my eyes looking at the camera lens as my head moves. If that reflex and skill isn't working well within your body, it is gonna be really hard to track the ball 
as it's traveling and as you're moving. But then we've also, or we also need the ability to track things with our head because in those final moments of contact, when you're watching the ball onto the strings, you've got your head and your eyes moving roughly at the same speed. And that's a completely different skill that's controlled in a different way. This is why watching the ball onto your strings is a really hard thing to do. The good news is that is all stuff that can be trained. And that's what I want to show you how to do right now. We're going to be working on four different simple drills that if you work on them on a regular basis, it is really going to help your ability to track the ball. The first drill we're going to work on is going to be a smooth pursuit exercise. This is a slow eye tracking exercise and we're going to be using some kind of visual target. I've got this stick with letters on. You could use a ball and just focus on one of the letters. You can even use your thumbnail. You just need some kind of visual target to look at. And then from there, it's really simple. I'm going to stand with good posture. I'm going to keep my head still because we want to train the eye movements individually at the moment. And then I'm just going to be moving the target slowly, keeping my eyes locked on it. I'm going to take it out to the side and then I'm going to bring it back to the middle. Now notice when I did this, I went slowly and I didn't go too far. I'm stopping, so if I stop in this position, I can still see that with both of my eyes, and that's where I recommend you start. The mistake that most people make is they go too big and too fast too soon, and it's gonna be less effective to do it that way. You wanna work on the quality first and then build up over time. So I'm gonna to go to the left, but I'm also gonna go in a number of other different directions as well. I'm gonna actually do eight directions. So I've gone left, I'm gonna do right, I'm gonna do up, down, up and right, up and left, down and right, down and left. So I'm basically doing all eight points of the compass. And the reason that we do this is because, as I said earlier, we've got different eye muscles that move the eyes in different directions. So we need to train all those muscles. And we've got different brain areas that move the eyes in different directions. So we need to make sure that we're training all of them. So a good starting point is gonna be about three repetitions in each of those eight directions, and then increasing the reps over time. For our second drill, we're gonna be working on fast eye switches. And just like we've done a moment ago, we're gonna be working on this in eight different directions, so the eight points of the compass. So the way that we'll do this, I'm gonna have two targets now. One of them is gonna be directly in front, so you can use your thumb. I'm gonna be looking at the camera lens, and then you're just gonna put the other target out. I'm gonna start with the left, so I'm gonna switch my eyes, focus on the target, switch back to the middle, focusing on the camera lens. Switch out to the target, then back to the camera lens. And again, when you do this, your job is to keep your head as still as possible. We're going for quality first, and then we're building up the number of speed and reps over time. So about five switches is gonna be a good starting point. So I'm gonna go five to the left, then I'm gonna go five to the right, then I'm gonna bring my target down below. So camera lens, then switching down below. Then I'm gonna go up above, so you won't be able to see it because it'll be off camera but I'm looking at the camera lens, then I'm switching to the top target, then I'm gonna do the points of the compass. And just like we have with the smooth pursuits, focus on quality, start with small ranges of motion, keep your head nice and still, and then build up the number of reps. And for this one, you can also increase the speed over time. The next drill that we're gonna be working on is a reflex that allows you to keep your eyes locked on a target as your head moves. And what you're gonna see is it's really simple to train and we're gonna do it in a very similar format to how we've just done it. I'm gonna be holding the visual target out in front. I'm gonna keep my eyes locked on the target and I'm just gonna use the camera lens so that you can see what my eyes are doing. And then I'm just gonna turn my head to the left, keeping my eyes locked on that tag target. Then I'm gonna bring it back to the middle, then turn to the left and again, back to the middle. So this is what it will look like. And once again, we're gonna do eight different directions to activate all of the different muscles. And this is also working on the balance system in the inner ear. And we're gonna be activating and training different parts of it. So I'm gonna go left, I'm gonna to go to the right, I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna go down, up and left, up and right, down and left, down and right. So hitting those eight points of the compass again. Same thing applies. I'm gonna start out with a lower number of reps. So three to five is a good starting point, going quite slowly. And then I'm gonna build up the speed and number of reps over time. And that brings us on to a final drill, which is gonna be our head tracking. So now again, I'm gonna be using that visual target, but this time I'm gonna be moving my head and the target at the same speed. So I'm imagining something is connecting my nose to the target that I'm looking at and I'm trying to move them together. 
Again, I'm gonna start out nice and small. I'm not trying to take it as far as I can. I'm just trying to go for a small range of motion and focus on the quality. I'm gonna go left, right, up, down, and then the different diagonals, so the eight different points of the compass, starting with around three reps, and then building up the speed and the number of reps from there. As you can see, those drills are very simple, but if you work on them consistently and you make it a priority within your training and practice to try and watch the ball onto your strings as well as you can, it is gonna really help you to cut down on the number of unforced errors you make. If you would like to learn more about this type of training, this is the main thing that I help tennis players with. I teach them how to improve their skill with brain-based training because realistically, the thing that holds most players back isn't knowledge. We've got all this amazing information available to us on YouTube. There's loads of awesome coaches out there that teach you the tactics and the technique and that kind of stuff, but you can only play at the level that your skill and ability level will allow you to play. Here, we were looking at eye movements for ball tracking, but other stuff is gonna be important as well, like your ability to quickly process visual information. If you're the sort of person that reacts slowly and prepares late, that's normally slow visual processing. If you're the sort of person that gets too close to the ball or you hit the ball late, that's normally an issue to do with spatial awareness. If you struggle to learn technique, that's often to do with your level of coordination. These are all things that can be improved with brain-based training, and it really allows you to kind of change your skill level and become a much better player. So if you'd like to learn more about that, I've created a, a free web class to teach you all about it. I'll place a link down below, and I'll place a link up there so you can check it out. The last thing I wanna mention is if you feel tired or nauseous or anything like that, when you do any of those drills, you wanna stop and you wanna take a rest. It shouldn't happen, but depending how your system is functioning, it can happen. Obviously, if that does happen, it tells you about these systems and that they're gonna need a little bit of work to really help your game, but you've just gotta make sure that you practice this stuff safely. Okay, if you've got any questions or comments about what I've done today, uh, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Obviously, if you wanna check that web class out, link's down there and up there. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.